Hello and welcome. This is going to be a tutorial series about first-person shooter games. Anything we learn in this series, however, can be implemented in other genres, other styles of games, such as Paper 2D, the regular side-scroller 2D, the third-person, the flyer, the any anything like that. Any kind of game this kind of system will work on. Uh, so certain things, however, won't like the mini map that we're going to put in. You know, it may not. It can be adapted to, but it, the particular way we're going to do this one will make it a mini map kind of a little hard for other difficult other styles of game. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to make us a new project. So we're going to go in here to our launcher here. Now I'm going to do this in 4.7.5. And nothing that I'm going to be doing as far as the blueprints and the nodes and stuff like that are going to be any different from what you would see in 4.6.1. Uh, the only difference that you will come across are things like the actual projectile, projectile movement stuff. The uh, There is no default component slash graph like there is in 4.6.1. They do it a different way in 4.7. I'll cover all that as that comes across so that there is easily able, so y'all are easily able to see the differences and pick up on if you're still using 4.6.1. So let's go ahead and get started here. I've already made the project, and this is just the base first person shooter template. I've taken and modified it a little bit. I took the base here and I extended it out and copied the original layout here and placed it over there and added this nice little hallway kind of walkway between the two gave us I moved the player start up here on top so that we can implement like fall damage or other things if we want and also have a nice little open area for when we do saving and loading and different little features that we're going to put into this so first thing we're going to do is the health system now this is actually fairly easy and it doesn't take long to do so we're just going to make us a new folder. We're going to call it assets. Now this ass these assets are going to be like anything. In this case, it's going to hold our HUD information. Later, it could be our saving and all kinds of other different things we'll put in here. But for now, we're going to start with the simple stuff. So we're going to grab that. We're going to make a blueprint. So you just right click down here. Now, that real quick in case you missed it. Right click, select blueprint class, or the actual thing you want to do is select blueprints. It's like Blueprint Interface. And then we're just going to call this HUD States. All this is literally going to do is house the information for our HUD. Or for our, our health bar, our ammo bars, whatever we want to put into our HUD, whatever we want the system to be able to access, this is going to house it. So in this case, we change our function name to whatever you want to change it to. I changed mine to HUD value. Now we want several outputs here. We will be doing ammo, so I'm going to go ahead and add the one for the ammo, just so we don't have to come back in here. So we got health. We have max health. We have ammo, and we have our max ammo. Now, anytime you deal with, the, with um, health values or you're wanting to show them, it's best to do a float system with those. The there is no way that I am aware that I am currently aware of to convert an integer to a float um, or even a float to an integer. Well, you can round a float to an integer, but you can't change an integer to a float. So we just always deal with the health stuff as a float. It makes it easier in the HUD when we go to create the HUD with the progress bar, which is what we're going to do, and I'll show that off later. So go ahead, compile, save that, and we're done in there. Now go into your, my not game mode, wrong one. Go into the first person character. Okay. Now we need to add our HUDs, our HUD state to this blueprint. Okay. And it's done the same way regardless of which way you're, uh, which one of the two versions you're using. So you just click on class settings. Click the add interface down here under the implemented interfaces. Click on add, go through the list, and find your HUD states. So now, if you double click on them, here's our states, and now we can actually set values. Okay, I want to go ahead and set all of these two variables. So we're going to call this health. 
We're going to call this one Max Health. We're going to call this one Ammo. And we're going to call this one Max Ammo. And we're going to set these to editable because we're actually going to use these outside of this program or outside of this particular blueprint as well. Oops. Okay. Mm -hmm. and now we'll give a value, let's say 50 out of a maximum of 100. That means we have 50 health currently when we start the game, and we have a maximum of 100. So we can have 100 out of 50, and that's all we can have. And we'll get into the ammo, max ammo stuff later. Okay. So how are we going to show the, play the player that we have that? Well, we're going to go ahead and create the HUD for it. So, go ahead and save it real quick. Unreal Engine has a tendency to crash a lot, at least on me, so you'll notice that I do quite a bit of saving, and I do apologize for that. So we're going to come here, we're going to make a new folder, and I'm going to call this Widgets, just because I like to have all my widgets together. Not Widgets, Widgets. All right. And in here, we're going to go ahead and create a, go up under User Interface, and create Widget Blueprint. Okay, we're just going to call this HUD. Go ahead and double click on it, open it up. Now, you'll see within our widget here, we have this nice blue border whenever we see, in the, whenever we pull this up. And that blue border is what we see, that's the edges of the screen. Okay, and we can do a pre preview size of, let's say... See, I got 23 inch monitor. So, if we had the 1920 by 1080p monitors, the we would see you'd see it like this. That's a DPI scale of one. Or we can go back down to the 19 inch monitor, which gives us a 14 by 40. You see a DPI scale of 83. Me personally, I usually just work in the default, which I for some reason can't remember how to get up. Um, 720p? Yeah, 720p. All right, you just click on preview size, select 720p, and you'll get the old, the original setup for it. Okay, so now we're going to set up a HUD here. Again, just compile this thing. So that we can show the player how much health we have. So we're going to do this with a progress bar. I'm going to drag this on out here. We want to make it nice and big. All right. I'm going to change its anchor to the center of the screen, the center top. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of position this right there, eh, underneath of it. Okay, we want the bar to fill from the left to the right, okay, that's the way it's going to fill. So when we actually take health from it, it's actually going to come from the right here and go backwards, okay. Um, something to I want to point out real quick is we see this nice little gray box right here. When you're playing the game, if you want a background on your health bar to show like the maximum versus how much you actually have, you would just leave it like it is. If you don't want to show that, then you would just select none under draw as, and the border would go away. I'm going to go ahead and leave mine like that because I actually like mine like this. Uh, let's see, We're going to set it to a nice little red color here. Increase this. There we go. Because if we have full health, we have a red bar. Well, actually, we would have a green bar, so let's go ahead and get a green. Just to keep it with standard gaming rules, almost. Alright, so now we have the green bar. Now, right here, where you see percent, we're going to click on bind, click a, create a binding. This is really simple to do. We drag off of the get percent zero. We type in HUD, and we see HUD value. That, or what you'll see, like, type in whatever you made the function name within your HUD state, within the HUD state's interface blueprint, and you want to look for that and make sure it says message out from it, okay? And 6.1, or 4.6, I don't think it has the message thing, it won't have this little envelope, but if it does, then that's good. Now, we're going to drag off of the target, and we're going to get the player character. Because we don't want any other one, any other information for this except from for, for from the player character. Drag this over. We're going to divide a float by a float. 
we want to divide the current health minus the amount of health we have, and that's going to be our return value. Now, as I was saying early, real quick, I want to show this off. Okay. There is no way to make two float. Integer two float. Oh, well, actually, there apparently is. My apologies from earlier saying it. I was apparently wrong. So you could actually make those integers if you wanted to. Just turn them to to float. Turn them to do your little divide. Turn them to integers. Do your little divide, and then turn the result of that into a float. So you could do that and keep the health actual full numbers, uh, full whole numbers if you wanted to. So they're not like 0 0.5, 0 0.6. You actually go from one to zero. All right. So now, this is going to set that up for us. Close out of that. Close out of the event graph. Click on the designer here. I'm going to explain something about this percentage tab here real quick. If you click or if you mouse over it, you notice it says use to determine the fill position of the progress bar ranging 0 to 1. That means this is 0, this is 1. So 100% is the, is the same as 1. 50% is 0.5. 25% is 0.25, and that's how it's going to fill up on this bar. So we're done in here, so go ahead and compile and save it real quick. Close that out. But how are we going to get that HUD onto our screen? So we got to go into the level blueprint, okay? And we're going to do an event begin, begin play, okay? From that event begin play, we want to drag off and do a create widget. Okay. What are we going to be putting in there? Well, we want to put our HUD. The HUD is what we want to put in there. Yeah. Okay. Well, what is the owning player of this? Well, the control, the player's controller is the owning, is the owning player to that. Okay. And then we just simply drag off the return value, add a, add to viewport, and then we're good to go. Okay. So we can go ahead and close out of that. Double check, yeah, okay. And then when we play it, we see the nice little green bar on top of the screen there, and it shows us how much health we have. If we change that value, you can see if I in 4.7, if I click on you click on your character, you can actually change the health values here. So if I change that to a hundred, you'll see we have a full bar of health there versus what the other one looked like. If you don't have that, like if you're in 4.6 and you want to just kind of see the different values, then you would just go back into your first person character and change that value there to 100 instead of that. So let's do 75 to start off with instead of the 100. But you can see here there's the health bar <coughs> and everything's good to go. So that's going to end it for this video. In the next one, we're going to put in our ammo. We're going to take this default first-person template here that we have, or the first-person character. We are going to limit how many shots it can fire, how many of these little balls it can fire, before it stops firing, and we have to reload the weapon. We are also going to make it to where you can only reload so many times, because you'll eventually run out of the maximum amount of ammo you have. So look forward to you checking out the next video, and stay tuned.